Today we are diving into client credential flow in OAuth 2.0, a method used for securely authenticating server-to-server -server communication. If you are curious about how apps like APIs communicate without user intervention, this is the flow you need to understand. And this is the flow we will use today in application integration to authenticate ourselves to an API and get resource or data out of that API. First. Let's clarify what the client credential flow is and when you'd use it. This flow is ideal when you have a backend server or machine to machine communication that doesn't involve user interaction. For instance, imagine a payment service communicating with a reporting API. There's no user here, just servers talking. Let's dive deeper into the complete flow step by step and see all the actors like client, authorization server and resource server involved in the client credential flow for OR 2.0. In this flow, the client think of it as the application needing access must first register with the authentication or authorization server. During this process, it gets a client ID which uniquely identifies it and a client secret which is essentially its password. These are like apps credential for authenticating itself. Next, the client sends a token request to the authorization server. This in request includes the client ID and client secret for authentication and the grant type which is set to client credential to indicate this specific flow. Now the authorization server validates the client's credential. If everything checks out, it responds with an access token. This token is essentially a key that the client can use to access protected resources. Finally, the client uses the access token to make a request to resource server. This is the server hosting their protected API or data. Resource server verifies the token and if it's valid, it, re it provides the requested resources. Here's a quick re recap. The client authenticates itself with the authorization server. It gets an access token. It uses the token to request resources from the resource server. It's very simple, efficient and secure way for server to server communication. So now that we understand the complete client credential flow, let's see a real API and an authorization server which can provide us this access to call that API. So now I am in my admin and I'm going to make a call to this API which I have set up. This API requires an authentication access token to be provided. I'm going to make a call. Now you can see that it says that access token is expired because uh, when I'm trying to access it, the token which I'm using is not valid. It has expired already and I need to provide a bearer token access uh, to access this resource. Now, how can I get this access token? So now I am uh, using the client credential resource which is provided by authorization server. And before I make this request, as we discussed that I need to provide client ID and client secret, which I am passing uh, inside the body of my request. It's a post request which I'm making. I'm providing a client ID and client secret. So if my client ID and client secret is valid, authorization server is going to respond with the access token. So if let's try with giving a wrong ID first. And if I send this request, authorization server is telling me that either I have invalid client ID or client information. So I need to provide proper information. Now I am providing proper client ID and client secret. And if I send this request, most important thing is this access token. And this is the access token which I'm going to use and make requests to my resource which is cured. So I'm going to go back and put that access token here and send this request. Now I am able to get response from my API server which has taken this token, validated it with an IDP authorization server and then sent me back the resource which I, want, I was looking for. Now let's go to application integration and implement this whole flow using application integration. So now I'm in application integration and let's create integration. Now to test my integration, I'm going to create an API trigger. In application integration, you have two ways to call any external resource. Either you can create an HTTP connector or you can use a REST API task. So first I'm going to use REST API task. So let's configure this REST task. So my endpoint is very simple. The resource which we just called from our postman. So before we set the authentication information, let's test and see if we are able to make this call. So I'm very simply going to make a call. So now I'm getting this response that I need to provide proper authentication, which is correct, which is coming from my API resource server. 
and it is telling that I'm not providing proper access detail. So I need to provide that. Now let's configure that REST API task. You have something called as authentication profile and you can use this authentication profile to set up different kind of authentication which you need for your API resource. Now here inside the type and settings, you have different ways which you can use to set up your authentication profile like auth token, Google OIDC, JSON web token, OR 2.0 authorization code, client credential, resource owner password, service account, and even client certificates. So this time we are going to use client credentials. So I'm going to put this. Now here are some configuration I need to give. I need to provide token endpoint. So now my token endpoint is the authorization resource endpoint which I was using previously. So I just give that with a complete parameter which I am providing like grant type client credential and then the client ID and client secret which I was using. Now, if your API needs some scopes to be provided, you can provide those scopes here. But for my example, I don't have any scope. And then the request type, because my API resource is protected by my client credential flow, which is based on request body, you can all even choose depending on what kind of resource protection you have or the data you need to send, how you are sending to your API. It could be request body, query parameter, and call it header. So in my case, I was sending it using request body. Now, if I go to the documentation of OR 2.0 client credential for the application integration, the request type details are given here. So if you are giving encoded header, it can send client ID and client secret as base64 encoded information in query parameters or in a request body. When you send it as a request body, it goes as form URL encoded. So this is what I'm using now. So I'm going to continue and I don't have any SSL certificate. So I'm going to leave it blank and click on create. I'm going to choose the profile which we just created. And this time I'm going to test it again. Let's go and see if we got a response from our API. If I expand this, so here is the response which I was getting from my API. Now what happened in this case was application integration first called my authorization server, got the access token, took the access token out of the response, put it as a bearer token on my API call and then that API server validated the access token which I sent and sent me back with the response of the API which is protected by client credential authorization flow. And this is how you can use application integration to call an API which is protected by OR 2.0 client credential flow. Thank you.